If we all started to spend less money, we could actually end up without a job. So our money split up between countless destinations, whether it's to buy groceries, pay the rent, or buy the latest tech. What we don't see is what happens to our money once we let go of it, and how some of it could actually be given back to us in the future. As I said, our money is divided up into hundreds of tiny pieces which we use every single day. These include buying the necessary items such as food, water and clothing, but it also includes the bills that we have to pay every so often. That's because we want to live with electricity, water and an actual roof over our heads. After paying for everything else, including treating yourself to a few catch-ups with friends, you also have to make sure there's enough money left over to pay your taxes. You can also think about how you're already paying a bit of tax when you buy pretty much anything because of GST. This is already calculated in the price, except for essential food items, water, medical products, and a few other things. Either just as a place to store our money in the short term before we go out and spend it, or somewhere to save up our money for our long-term goals, we may look at sending some of this money towards the financial sector. And a riskier, but sometimes more rewarding alternative of sending our money into a bank account for our long-term goals is to invest it. Once we have sufficiently split up our income, each of these destinations has their own role to play in the further distribution of this money. So after we go out and buy clothes, groceries or tech, each of these companies would then use some of the money towards buying more of the stock to fill their shelves from their distributors. This might be farmers, manufacturers or their own privately contracted factories. On top of this, they also have to pay their own form of tax to the government, which might be income or payroll. They also have to then pay their utilities and either rent or maybe repayments on a loan. They could then also look towards expanding their company, which might start out as being sending some of this money towards the financial sector to save up for the right time. But they would then need to look to other companies to be able to design, build and facilitate the expansion. This is really starting to look like the same path as before, right? Well, you'd be pretty correct in saying that. They only have two extra roles that they get to play. The first is that they get to play the role of the employer, which means that they would have employees which they have to pay, including you. The second role is that they're the real driving force behind the import and export industry within each country. And this means that they have the ability to move materials from one country to the next to be used in manufacturing or refined product. The next place to explore is the financial sector. So what do these banks really do with their money? Surely they don't just lock them up in vaults anymore. In reality, these banks do use this money that we save into them for many of the same purposes as a normal company would, but in a few different ways as well. So they actually see things in the opposite way as the consumer who would use the bank to save or invest through. They see our savings as a future expense because they know that they'll eventually have to give the money back so that you can use it. But they also see loans as planned future income because they know that you have to pay it back, but they'll also get a royalty on top in the form of interest. Banks do actually pay taxes as well, both on their income, but also on the amount that they pay their employees. They also have to pay council rates and land tax for each of their branches. A bank's income is based on how much interest they make from their loans, as well as any fees that they may receive from credit cards, overdue payments, or even transaction fees if that bank decides to facilitate people trading shares on the stock market. Okay, so what I haven't explained is that Australia has a payroll tax where companies have to pay money to the government based on how much they pay their employees. And this is just giving the government some money to spend in those areas where the most people are working so that you can try and build up the area so you have better quality of life while you're living there, but also to try and incite more people coming there to build the area up further. Finally, we have the government where all of these taxes end up. And some of this money ends up at the local government or the state government or even the federal level. And each of these different levels has different roles and responsibilities for what they need to do with this money. And I'll be making a short on that soon, so keep an eye out for that. But overall, this money is split up into many different places to try and help support and maintain your quality of life. Whether this might be towards your local environment, such as the parks, the parking spaces, and also the roads. But then they also have to look after public schooling, emergency services, hospitals, public transport, internet, postal service, and then also the military so that we can stay safe as a nation. Now that we know how money travels around the economy, let's look at what happens during a recession, or at least what might cause one, and how sometimes they are actually self-fulfilling prophecies. So, after hearing that a recession may be coming, we might start to think about how we're using our money and how much goes to each source. And for the most part, we'll stay the same because we still have to pay the same bills such as groceries and clothing. 
and all the water, electricity that we might use, and also to pay to have a roof over our head, whether that's in the form of rent or a mortgage. What you might be cutting down on is how much you're spending for the non-essential food and clothing, as well as going out with friends. And what we can see is that this would reduce how much GST you would pay to the government, but you would still have to pay normal income tax. So this reduction in spending is because some people look at a recession as a time where money might be short and the unemployment rate rises because companies also don't have as much money to pay their employees, they have to get rid of some. A recession is also a time where investors think that their shares are going to lose value, so they start to pull their money out of the stock market and out of the hands of the companies that they had their money invested into. And this just ends up fulfilling that prophecy, because the share price will go down. So what you might be able to see is that by us, the consumers, not spending as much, as well as investors taking their money out of these companies, the companies will end up not having as much free money, which means that they'll struggle to both pay all their employees as well as paying all their other essential expenses. So it means that they'll start having to cut down on the amount of employees they have, which might include you. And this just feeds into the news and restarts the cycle. That's all for me today. I've been Tom and this has been Tom's Morning Magic. See ya.